Hey everybody and welcome to this video tutorial on how to integrate uh, PE Now resources from open into uh, a school learning management system and the learning management system that Brian is going to walk us through today happens to be Schoology uh, but you can use this sort of organization with whatever uh, LMS you guys are, are using with your students uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Brian and let him uh, walk everybody through the organization thanks for doing this Brian no problem, Aaron. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. And, and as you mentioned, um, we just happened to pick this particular learning management system. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there, uh, Google Classroom, um, Canvas, and, and some of those others. And they all, for the most part, it seems like, pretty much have the same uh, ability to do the same sorts of things. So um, you, know, you can take some of the things that are in here, and, and it may look a little different in your learning management system. But you know, the purpose of this really isn't about the nuts and bolts of how the learning management system operates. It's how to take those PE Now resources and utilize them uh, throughout a learning management system. So if you're teaching your students face-to-face -face, um, or if you're uh, teaching your students virtually, you kind of understand how you can set some of these things up into a classroom. Uh, some school districts I've even heard, even if they're back face-to-face, -face, they're requiring teachers to set things up into a learning management system so that they always have their backup ready to go. And, and each week they have to have their face-to-face -face plans as well as their virtual plans all set up and, and ready to roll. So uh, hopefully everyone will find this tutorial to be a little bit helpful as far as how to take some of those things from PE Now and put them into the LMS. So I utilized the uh, middle school section of PE Now and the, the first three weeks, the Go Be Great, that's what I, I kind of focused on there. And this is not to say this is the end all be all, but this is just one way you can kind of set it up. So within Schoology, uh, I've set up folders for each of the three weeks. And um, when I click on week number one, you'll see it'll go ahead into the first part of uh, what is week one of Go Be Great. And what I did was I, first of all, made sure that I put some documents in there that will, will be important to students. So for example, we had our week one to three student checklist, and that's something that students and parents look at to make sure they check off as they complete everything for each week. So, and that's included in every one of the first three folders, weeks one, two, and three, um, because I wanted that to be at the student's fingertips. Ideally, the student would print that off and they would go ahead and hang that up somewhere where they're doing their virtual work. Um, the next document that I wanted in all three weeks was the uh, PE vocabulary, our academic language. So I went ahead and uh, put that document in and it's straight off of uh, the open website off of PE Now and you see in Schoology, it'll go ahead and open that up and then uh, it'll go ahead and give them here the ability to either print it or go ahead and download that document. Uh, as we talked about in our last video, we didn't go with the full academic language cards. We uh, simplified things because we felt like students would be printing more things at home and, and needing more things at their fingertips. So uh, that was another document that I felt students would really need to have access to throughout all of the uh, weeks that we had. So this is a good il illustration too, Brian, because I think probably one of the most frequently asked questions we get is, is it okay to upload these into our learning management system? So, I mean, obviously the way you're doing it is to show them, yes, you know, take that PDF, upload it right into the folder so it's easy access to the students. Right, of course. And that's, um, that, that just makes it to where the students um, you know, have all the materials that they need for week one right at their fingertips. They don't yeah. have week one to go somewhere else. Um, you do have the ability um, within some places to do um, with resources where you can list different resources for the class. Um, but I like to, to keep um, everything kind of together. That was one thing I learned in working with online programs for three years is the more we can keep students in one central location in one place, the better off we're going to be. We don't want them to have to navigate away and then come back. Right. So the first assignment that I had them do was really kind of the first thing in, in PE now was the PE questionnaire. Um, a great habit to get into is to list, even though it says it's due down here at the bottom, is also put the due date that is up here, um, you know, within the assignment. So when students go ahead and click and they have a brief description of, of what they're going to do, they're going to complete that Word document and submit it. Um, so students have the ability to just straight out click right there. They download the Word document. They can type in their answers 
uh, for the PE questionnaire. And then on the student side, um, you know, obviously their side's gonna look different than this. They would have the ability to click on that upload button and upload the assignment to me so that I could get it in my grade book and go ahead and grade it. Um, so we're starting, you know, like I said, with, with week one. So we're just gonna kind of work our way through some of those different resources that are within um, PE now. Um, we don't necessarily, we're not gonna necessarily use all of them in week one and realizing also that People are seeing kids at different times. Some are requiring synchronous lessons. Some are requiring asynchronous lessons. So if um, even if you're doing synchronous lessons, you may have some of this work posted in there for students to go ahead and do. So you have your asynchronous time and then um, they, uh, they have the ability to com complete that during that time. So, um, you know, it's just a way to, to spread out the work throughout the entire week. You also um, can integrate some different platforms within Schoology, just like you can in some other things. So this is um, an introductory video to Flipgrid. So basically, all I did was uh, integrate a, a Flipgrid into um, my lesson, and I, as the teacher, recorded an introduction about myself. And then the students would then go ahead and record their response back to me so that I could get the opportunity to learn a little bit more about them. And obviously in a virtual environment, this is gonna be huge because you wanna be able to put a face on your course. You just don't want um, the, the students to be in there and, and think, oh, Coach DeVore, who's he? He's just some guy behind the email address, B. DeVore. Um, so this personalizes it a little bit, but it also personalizes it for them too. Um, I get to know the students more. Um, within Flipgrid, you know, you have the ability to um, keep all of the videos uh, under lock and key until you permit them. So until myself as the teacher, I go in and watch the video, then I can release it out. And students can get to learn each other. I mean, how handy would that be, especially for new students? Yeah. They just moves into the district and they, they don't even know anybody at their school. At least they can put some faces and some names with some people. Yeah, that's great. It's great. And, you know, uh, another kind of frequently asked question that we've had around our YouTube videos is, can they, can a teacher reproduce our YouTube videos uh, for their students and and I would encourage it right I mean it's great we you know our trainers and and we've done a nice job with some of those YouTube videos but for the for the students to be able to see their teacher demonstrating the activity for them is a part of that relationship build that I know everybody understands kids need to have so any activity that we demonstrate via YouTube uh, I, I want to make sure all teachers know you can record yourself doing that same activity, demonstrating it for your students specifically, and put it on your learning management system for all your students to see a video of, of you as the teacher. Right. No, and it's a huge part of the social and emotional learning concept as well. Mm -hmm. I think those human relationships and and uh, and getting to know different people. I mean, I think, and especially in a virtual environment, anything we can do with our students, as I mentioned earlier, to put a face on that teacher. It's yeah. not somebody hiding behind an email address or a or text message. So um, it helps build those relationships. So then next I integrated the, uh, the week one menu board and, and you can see here by the due dates, the 25th, the 26th, the 27th, um, the 31st, we're staggering things out um, throughout so that um, students have the opportunity to do some work each and every day. So the menu board, the way that I set it up um, was that I posted the, uh, the teacher talk that was found um, doing about the brain and body warm-ups, the purposeful practice, and the just for fun and health. I posted that in there to give the students a little bit of background as far as with the menu board and, and what it was all about. And mm -hmm. I've posted the menu board in there, but also what I did was I posted the directions. This, both of these documents are found um, you know, within PE now. So if I open the, um, the menu board, and I'll click to the view open so that uh, it can go ahead and download. And then um, as that comes open, it's going to open up the document just as you would be able to open it within uh, the open website. So you see that um, everything's downloadable here. Even the YouTube link is hot linked. So if you all want right. to have it all right there, it's linked to the YouTube site. So students can go in there in order to, to view the different videos. Um, obviously, another resource, if you wanted to post at the beginning, would be the, the YouTube links, because we do have that, that video link document that is posted uh, within PE Now. So it just gives them the opportunity to have everything right there at their fingertips. And the other thing that I love, too, is if uh, students are looking at this on a phone or a, a tablet, you know, they don't necessarily have to mess with landscape or portrait. It comes through, um, you know, in portrait just fine. So mm -hmm. 
that was how I integrated the, uh, the menu board in, utilizing the teacher talk, as well as uh, the different menu board um, items there. Now, how you want to assess, you know, does it, did the student complete the assignment on this is, is kind of up to you. There's a, a ton of different ways. I mean, you can create your own assessment. It could be a participation. It could be they upload a short video or a short or a photo of themselves doing some of the activities or even write a reflection on the menu board. You know, what did they get out of it? What was mm -hmm. the activity? What did they learn? Yeah, this, this is fantastic. I love the organization. I love how easy it is for students to click through. And like you said, the fact that they, they're really in one central location for the whole week. They don't have to click around and try to figure out what resource they're looking at. It's all boom, right here in a list for them. Correct. Um, so the last thing I had for week one was the week one activity log. Um, so to, to get this in, and, and I know that um, within PE now, all three weeks are kind of loaded in there all together. So mm -hmm. what I did was to create the Word document because I want students to be able to type right in there. Um, I just went in and downloaded all three and I deleted the, the last two pages to leave week number one. Um, so it's pretty simple to do and, and you can do that. That's why we created them as Word documents. Right, and, exactly. And edit them in there. So when the student accesses um, you know, this activity log, they can go ahead and download that activity log and just keep track of it during the week. Now the logs go from the previous Monday through Sunday. So they're gonna go from, I assume that school started on Monday, August 24th, and then they're gonna go through Sunday, um, August the 30th. So uh, when they download this as a Word document, they're gonna have the ability to type in all these boxes here and, and have the ability to make sure that they record everything, um, do their fun meter, and uh, make you know see how they did with their physical activity. So um, once again, keeps it all in one location. They can keep track of it during the week if they want to as they go ahead and download that document and have the ability to, to post it and make it so that the work is done gradually throughout the week as opposed to, oh, it's Sunday, I gotta go back and remember what I did all during the previous week. Yeah, and I know just in my household, that was one of our challenges, uh, trying to figure out the homeschooling thing. Suddenly we would have be, get to Sunday and there'd be all this work like in the folder all you know stacked on top of each other. And, and so the, the kitchen table would just be a homework factory for about seven hours <laughs> on a Sunday. Uh, but it, but it, you know, everyone was kind of getting used to how, it, how the whole thing operated and you know kids and teachers uh, alike. So this organization, I think will help everybody pace themselves through the week. Right, and, and you obviously too, if students have access to a printer, I mean, they can print it out and keep track of it during the week and then go back and type it in on Sunday if they want to. So you, you've got a ton of different strategies that you can utilize with your students in order to get them, um, you know, to get these documents all completed and keep track of it during the week rather than it being that uh, mass chaos right at the end before they turn everything in. So, um, so that was kind of how I structured week one. Again, the, the point wasn't necessarily to get everything in there but to, to show you how you can pull some of those different uh, tools in to uh, construct your course utilizing PE Now. And you'll see um, as I go through and go back to the main class and we'll click into week number two, I think one of the, one of the good things that you need to re remember and remind yourself of as you go through constructing these different weeks is that you wanna try and, and make things look a little bit different. It shouldn't be this necessarily the same rote routine every single week. Now, some things are gonna, if you do the activity, um, the activity calendars and submit the activity logs, then yes, I mean, that's gonna be there every week. Um, and the menu boards, yeah, they're probably gonna be there every week. But you're gonna have the ability, as you'll see in week number two, to go ahead and integrate some other tools in there. So I led off with our documents, as I mentioned before, the checklist and the vocabulary. Um, the menu board, gonna be similar to uh, you know, how we integrated the menu board in for week number one. Students click on it, they have the ability to do it, create an assessment for it if you want to, or a reflection piece. Um, I took the choice board and integrated that into uh, week number two. So the choice board is another component of PE Now for middle school. So open that up real quick. And basically I had them just select one item from each column to complete the workout and be sure to log your activity time. So with our um, choice board this time, you know, you've got the, the three different columns there and wanted to give students the ability 
to select which one that they wanted to do. So giving, giving a little bit of student choice into the equation for what they wanted to do from their brain and body warmups to purposeful practice to just for fun. So, um, you know, they have the ability to, to pick one from each of those three columns in order to get their activity for that particular day. Yeah, and I, I love the way that uh, you were able to kind of take everything, like you said, mix it up just a little bit. So there, there's some things that are very routine, just like we would have in our classroom, right? They know when they go in, they're going to see the checklist right away. They feel comfortable with that but they can kind of scan through and say, hey, I wonder what we're doing in physical education this week. And you know, there'll be some surprises in there. There'll be some things they click on and it's new and uh, hopefully you know, exciting and gets them motivated uh, to, to try some different activities. Right, and, and another new thing that I pulled in for this week was some of the discussion questions that are in uh, PE Now. So uh, you know, in PE Now, it's a big long list of different discussion questions that you can utilize throughout those first three weeks. Mm -hmm. I um, a handful of questions out. So this is basically an assessment where students are going to write their responses to the assessment. And this is the teacher side. So obviously it's going to look a little different than the student side. I'll show you the preview to that in just a minute. But I pulled four of the questions and they go um, from one to four al aligning with depth of knowledge questioning. So starting with very simple and then going to more complex. And then this revolves around physical activity. Since we've done some of the menu boards, they had the opportunity to do a choice board. So it talks a little bit about physical activity, but it also enables me to learn a little bit more about my students too. Three physical activities that they really enjoy. What do you need in order to, to participate in those? Um, you know, making modifications for home or school and then create a short conversation you could have with a family member that will help uh, you ask them for help in participating. So, um, you know, this enables me to get some responses from my students. It enables me to do some type of an assessment with them, but also learn a little bit more about my students and, and what uh, they're all about and what they enjoy in physical activity. So you see, and obviously this is what it looks like um, from the side of uh, checking out. Yeah. The different questions and submitting their answers and they submit them right in the platform just as they could in Google or um, you know whatever platform you happen to utilize. And, and this is great because from an accessibility perspective, you know those discussion questions were meant to, uh, like you said, help build relationship between teacher and student. So the teacher gets to know what the student likes and enjoys and and how they're doing with their physical activity selection. Uh, but you know if you're in a classroom and you can do this live, it's easy, right? If you're via Zoom you can still facilitate that same discussion, uh, but you're gonna have students who are having trouble with their Zoom connection that day. Um, you're gonna have students that maybe have trouble with their Zoom connection every day because they're you know, sharing their mom's phone to do their homework with their brother and sister. And so the, the ability that they can now also respond to this in another format that's easy for you to collect the data on and easy for them to facilitate I think is really, really good. And, and one thing that I would suggest to teachers, just because you're doing the, the discussion responses the way that Brian just showed you where the kids can type it in, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it via Zoom or live, right? Because what you're doing when you're, when you're actually walking through those discussion questions, you're basically planting the seeds for student responses. And maybe, they, maybe it's a student who needs a little bit more time to process. Right. And they don't feel comfortable raising their hand and, and discussing it via Zoom or something like that. But they do have the opportunity now to share their thoughts and feelings through this platform. Um, so I would suggest allowing students to submit, you know, in a variety of different ways, whether it's live and in person via Zoom or, you know, through the Schoology or whatever learning management system application you have for submitting answers to questions. Well, and if you're in a, in a synchronous environment where you're being required to do that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that live instruction, it's a great discussion to have before you give the assignment, okay? right. before the assessment is done, is, is talk about some of those things. Hey, what do you, what is it, you know, type in the chat box, what do you enjoy to do for physical activity? One thing, you mm -hmm. know, gives students a chance to not only supply their own answer, but it may trigger some things that they like to do by seeing their classmates' responses. Right, um, exactly you're almost kind of walking them through an example of the assignment 
before you give them the assessment, the discussion questions, which are a little bit more. They got to come up with three now, not just one. Right. So, um, but, but you kind of lead them through the assignment first and have that discussion as a group before you turn them loose on the assignment. Right. Right. Yeah, this is fantastic. So then we have our, obviously our week two activity log and, and, and you may want to put some other assignments in there. You may want to have an assignment due on, um, you know, due on, fr on uh, the Friday, or excuse me, on the Monday, you know, when they mm -hmm. get, they'll, we'll have Monday. So Wednesday is really the only day lacking there where there wasn't an assignment due during that week. So um, if you wanted to create something else for them to do during that week, obviously you can, if you need to have something for each of the days. Um, but again, it just depends on everybody's teaching, uh, you know, requirements, and we've learned very quickly that they're all across the board. Today. They're all over the map. Yep. Yep. So week number three, the final week of Go Be Great. Um, and, and I want to stress here, as far as like online courses, like this is another good thing. Uh, a lot of times teachers will just put week one, week two, week three, and that's all those that's all the students will see in the folders. Um, put some type of description in there or some type of motivational message. Um, don't just leave, I mean, you know, there's nothing you know, the first question the students are going to have is, oh, what are we doing this week? Right. Well, I have a little bit of a descriptor in there to kind of tease in, okay, this is what, we, this is what we have going on this week, or this is, you know, this is where we're at. Um, you know, it just kind of generates that, oh, okay, gets a little interest going in what they're doing. So try not to just have, you know, blank folders with generic labels in there, if at all possible. Back in the day, it was the anticipatory set or setting the hook. Right. right. This is this is the the new version of that, right? <laughs> the virtual version. <laughs> um, so uh, the layout here for week number three, uh, like I said, kind of similar. We we um, had some different things, um, you know, that, that we kept in there as far as the checklist, vocabulary. We're doing the menu board. Now the choice board here was where I, I kind of. Um, branched off and made this a little bit more um, difficult for the students. So, you know, in week number two, we, they had the assignment where they went ahead and did the choice board that was already laid out through PE Now. Well, one of the other PE Now resources is for students to do their own choice board. So we gave them an example and had them uh, do the choice board that we had prepared for them. Well, now this time they've got to create their own choice board. So they've got to, to submit their activities, their quick instructions and have that all submitted and that's part of the assignment. So, you know, maybe we had that discussion about choice boards. They had the opportunity to go through and do a choice board. We talked a little bit more about physical activity with, um, you know, doing those discussion questions and they had a chance to submit that. And now they're at the highest part, they're creating something, um, you know, that is a choice board for, you know, themselves to use, their, their peers to use, or, or maybe you want to highlight that in class. So I wanted to, to kind of show that step there where you're, you're starting off basic and you're having the students go a little bit higher and a little bit higher as far as with their, um, you know, with their thinking skills and, and what they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, one more thing also, and I forgot to, to highlight that in here. Um, I did make sure that I put in that assignment because I told them that they could refer back to week number two. So I went ahead and put the choice board right there. So yep. now have to go back to week two to look at the choice board that they did. They've got the sample right there, um, right where they need it in order to click on it so that they can see it and view it. Um, and another part of what I did was to complete the assignment. So there was a lot of text here and there were a lot of things that they needed to do, but I wanted to break it down into steps as far as what it was exactly that they want, needed to do in order to complete this assignment. So they have to create the choice board and submit. They have to upload a photo or video of you doing one of the activities and then make sure that they log their activity time. So it breaks it down step by step. This is what you're responsible for at the end. Otherwise, you're going to get students who design the choice board and they don't do the other two parts. Right. So you want to make sure that you, you outline specifically what it is that they're responsible for when they get to the end of the assignment. And, and that was one of the biggest things that we, the feedback we got from parents um, that had reached out to us because their PE teacher was using open resources back in March and April and May is that, hey, we just need to know what, what the kids are supposed to do. And that's why we designed the checklist that way. But with that thinking, you know, it's for every assignment, the more you can spell it out and the bullet out exactly what needs to happen, the better off the kids and you are going to be in the end. Uh, because what they turn into you is going to be a reflection of what, how they, how they interpreted the instructions. 
Right. And it's going to, and it seems like it's a little bit more work on the front end, but it's going to save you so much time and effort on the back end. I mean, right. imagine if you, you have, you know, 30 kids in a class and only 10 of them turn in all three things. Well, now you're working with 20 other students trying to chase down the other, you know, one or two parts of the puzzle that, that they didn't put in because they didn't know, or they mm-hmm. didn't had to do that part. So, um, you know, it's, it's a few extra keystrokes on the front side and a little bit more organization, but it's going to save you a ton of time and effort on the backside. Yeah, absolutely. So then we have our, our activity log um, here um, that we'll complete for week three, but then we also had our Go Be Great vocabulary quiz. So uh, the way I set this up was it's with that vocabulary that's been, been going through um, within each of the uh, different weeks, the three weeks that we had set up, and I set it up as a, a matching. Um, but I didn't just do it, match the definition. So instead of utilizing the definition, I tried to give the students a particular situation that they may run into, and then they have to analyze the situation and then plug in the vocabulary term. So even if they have the vocabulary terminology definitions pulled up on another screen or on their phone, it's not necessarily going to give them the answer to the question if they have that. Right. We're still going to have to process and analyze a little bit. So, That's great. Um, so they're planning a choice board and you find a website with fantastic activities. So, you know, what is that website going to be? Well, it's going to be a resource, but in order for them to know that they've got to go through it and kind of go through that process. They have to know what a resource is and then do that extra analyzation before they go ahead and plug it all in. So this is, this is um, a different, quiz that you created using the concepts of PE now, but not necessarily found in PE now. Cause I can imagine people watching this are going to say, this is great. Where is it? I want to find it. Um, so maybe this is a, a good place to, to plug this in. Uh, there is actually a student code uh, for this Schoology school where anybody viewing this tutorial can use that code and can access all of these materials as if you were a student in Brian's class. Um, and Brian, if they do that, can they click into week three and view this assignment and, and maybe copy and paste what you did into theirs? Sure. So if they go ahead and join that course and, and um, you know, we'll, we'll put that out on social media and maybe we'll be able to put, when we post this to YouTube, we could put the code in the uh, comments. Yep, definitely. So, um, but um, yes, so they'll, they'll see the student view. They won't see the teacher view. So right. they, go in and edit anything but yes they'll be able to go in and click and see the different resources and how how it's been outlined and posted and and i'm assuming they could go in and, and copy text and paste and yeah because this is a great assignment this is fantastic well and like i said i mean it, these different these five things here i created on my own mm-hmm. i created it based on the definition that was on those vocabulary cards right but I didn't want it to be where, you know, knowing that you could pull those cards up, I didn't want it to just be a straight, easy matching, you know, I wanted to have to think a little bit and process some. Yeah. It, to, it, and this yeah. is a great example. I mean, when we post stuff, even before COVID and all of that, whenever we posted anything on, on the open website, it was, it was meant to give uh, a, as many tools as we can so that teachers can take whatever we put out there and run with it and make it their own. Uh, and, and, you know, we've heard from all sorts of people, all sorts of creative things that they've done with open content. Um, so I, I'm glad you did that because it just illustrates just because we have these, these documents listed doesn't mean those are the only documents, right? You have so much creativity as a teacher, uh, take what we've given you and run with it. Right. And, and I think, you know, the, and part of the reason that I did this though, was because, Sometimes teachers aren't, they're not sure how to utilize those documents in a virtual setting. Uh, right. And, you know, in a lot of school districts, um, you know, maybe they overlooked the specials area or, or the electives area um, in the spring when everything hit. And, but now in back to school, they're requiring these areas to set up virtual classrooms or to set up in the different learning management systems. And, and they want to see what they have in there. So, I felt like it would be a valuable tool um, based on my knowledge and experiences to have kind of that, that sample out there for teachers to show yeah. that, okay, we can still teach progressions going through, but the progression is going to look a little bit different 
in a virtual environment than it is in a face-to-face -face environment where we're actually, you know, kinesthetically learning how to throw a ball or how to catch a ball or how to dribble a basketball or those different things. Right, right. And we're, what we're really, especially like at the middle and high school level, we're asking the students to take a lot more responsibility for their own physical activity behaviors um, and their health and wellness. And I mean, honestly, that as a, as a physical education profession, that's the goal is we want to be able to make sure our students, when they finish our program, are going to be physically active for life. Uh, this is this is really, I think, one of those things that we're going to look at and say, maybe we continue to use some of these tools even after COVID's gone, and we have kids coming back into the into the gym and in our classrooms, and you know, we resume what used to be traditional physical education. I think there's gonna be parts of, of what we do now that we absolutely should keep because it's, it's helping our students become more independent movers. Well, and I think that, you know, moving forward, I think that that requirement's gonna be there for physical educators in the future that they create in whatever learning management system that they have, that they create and keep all their documentation and their lesson plans and all in there. Um, right. Because I, th I feel like that they, the responsibility has been put upon us now. And right. in the past, it's been somewhat overlooked, whether it was because we didn't want to do it or felt it didn't apply to us, or because administrators felt like it didn't apply to us because of our content. I think it's going to be a requirement moving forward. Yeah. Once it's out of the box, you can't put it back in. <laughs> especially especially <laughs> the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, Brian, I could say, you know, my students actually show up next week. And uh, I'm busy uh, in Blackboard, which is the learning management system that we use here. Um, I'm busy in Blackboard building out my first five weeks uh, to get my students up and running. So I appreciate you because I've gotten a lot of ideas on, on how I'm going to kind of tweak things in my planning uh, just based on how you've organized things. So uh, I, I really appreciate you doing this for the entire open nation and, uh, and for walking me through it because I learned a lot today. Oh, no problem. And and a lot of this, I, I've got to um, thank uh, Ryan Fuller and Cheryl Rowley at Cobb Virtual Academy here with the Cobb County School District. Um, I worked with them for three years and learned a ton from them about um, not just physical education and health education, but how to deliver you know quality online um, education. So um, without their expertise and, and taking me under their wing, uh, you know, a lot of this I, I wouldn't have been able to figure out on my own. So I appreciate everything they did and the opportunity to learn from them. Yeah, it takes a community. So, all right, well, uh, we're gonna continue to pump out more new open weekly content, PE Now, and check back with us on a regular basis. We hope you enjoyed uh, this real quick tutorial and uh, there's more to come. Thanks everybody.